Hello and welcome to another New Blue Captivate tutorial. I'm Ian Stark for New Blue, and in this tutorial, we're going to be looking in depth at the new media sequencer. We're going to work up a simple media sequence to use in a fictional commercial break, but I'm also going to put together a follow-up tutorial with several use case scenarios that demonstrate different ways you can use the media sequencer in your projects. So this is what we're going to create today. It's a fictional 60 seconds commercial break comprising clips made up of repurposed promos that I've made over the last few years. Let's get started. A media sequence can be made up of one or more pieces of imported media. The media can be video, still images or audio in a wide variety of formats. To create a new media sequence, I can either click on add new item media sequence or I can import a media file into my project. If I go through the import route, notice that the project panel icon shows you what type of media it is, in this case a video. If I go into the media sequencer and add a second piece of media, regardless of the format, the project panel icon changes to a media sequence icon and it'll keep the file name of the first piece of media that you imported. If you create an empty media sequence from scratch, it'll be called sequence, sequence one, sequence two, and so on. Of course, you can always rename these items to something more meaningful. Let's start a new project and add an empty media sequence and rename it Commercial Break 1. Now, I want to start adding my clips to this sequence and I can do that by clicking the Add Media button or by simply dragging one or more files into the media sequencer. The table shows me the file name, the duration of each clip in seconds, the cut-in point, which is where I want the video to start, and the number of times I want the video to repeat within the sequence. So if, for instance, I set three repetitions, it'll play four times in total. I can also see the transitions used between each clip and the duration of those transitions. For our commercial break, let's leave all the clips at their original length. Actually, I remember there's an annoying seven second color bar display at the start of the You Save commercial, so I don't want that one to start until the seven second mark. That's set in the cut in field. I don't want any of the videos to repeat within this sequence, so I'll leave repetitions set at zero for every clip. Now, it's no secret that I am not a fan of wild and wacky transitions, but the one area where I feel I can really let my hair down is in a commercial break. So I'm going to forego the straight cut and eschew the crossfade, and instead I'll go for new transition and pick the flip over preset from 3D Flip. I'll keep the default transition properties as I'm already getting a migraine. I think the duration of the transition is going to be a little short, so I'm going to double that to one second. And now for the sake of my sanity, I'm going to use the same transition for all the clips. But the more adventurous among you may want to go nuts, so go ahead, knock yourselves out. So now the moment of truth has arrived. Let's look at our commercial break sequence. Now I realise that I actually want the first commercial to be the you save video. So I'll reorder the sequence by dragging you save up to the top. And notice that when I play it out, the seven seconds of color bars has been ignored and we go straight into the commercial. And thinking about it, I don't really want the commercial for upstage in this sequence, so I right click it and select Remove Selection from Sequence. I can just as easily replace a clip, so if for example I have a newer version of a clip which I want to use, I right click and select Replace Footage. Now, at the bottom of the media sequencer, we'll find the sequence flow details. If I click on the little triangle, you can see this is split into three parts. The start behavior, where I can choose to start the sequence from the beginning each time I play it, or to start from the last position reached. The playback order, with the option to play the clips in the sequence shown in the table, or to play them at random. And finally, the end behavior, which lets me choose whether I repeat the sequence indefinitely, hold on to the final item in the sequence, or to simply stop playback when the last clip is finished. Note that hold on final item will simply replay the last video over and over, and that option might be more useful with a still image or a looping video. 
These handy little icons show me at a glance how my sequence is configured, and in this case I can tell you that the sequence will always start from the beginning, will always play in sequence, and will repeat indefinitely. Glancing to the right of the Remove and Add New Media buttons, the hamburger icon lets me completely clear the sequence so I can start from scratch. I can also export the clips in a sequence to a specified folder, and that's very useful if I've been adding clips from multiple sources and want to gather them all up in the same folder. And finally, I can set a default for all new sequences, which is to repeat the sequence indefinitely or to just play it once. Now, every time I create a new sequence, it'll follow that setting. And that's it. In this tutorial, we looked at creating a new sequence, adding media to it, configuring the media, setting up hideous transitions, and changing the flow of the sequence. Don't forget that follow-up tutorial where we'll be looking at a few real-world applications of the media sequencer. So if you want to know when that tutorial is available, you know what to do. I'm Ian Stark for New Blue. Thanks for watching.